We start with a major summit between Presidents Putin and Trump in Helsinki, Finland. Only the second face-to-face -face meeting between the two, and President Trump made a call for cooperation between the two powers despite recent international disputes. The disagreements between our two countries are well known, and President Putin and I discuss them at length today. But if we're going to solve many of the problems facing our world, then we're going to have to find ways to cooperate in pursuit of shared interests. Too often in both recent past and long ago, we have seen the consequences when diplomacy is left on the table. President Putin also made a call for cooperation, saying the Cold War ended a long time ago, and he repeated that call for cooperation. I consider them quite successful and useful. We examine the current state and perspective of Russia-U.S. relations, as well as key issues of the international agenda. It's obvious to everyone that bilateral relations experience a complicated period. But these difficulties and the current tense atmosphere don't have any objective reasons. The Cold War has been over long ago. The times of an acute ideological opposition of the two countries have become a thing of the past. The global situation has profoundly changed. For more on this, let's go to Jeremy Kuzmarov, author of The Russians Are Coming Again. The first Cold War was tragedy, the second as farce. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Where do we uh, go from here? Where does the summit uh, put us in the uh, Russia, Russia, Russia hysteria? Is it going to get worse or will this have dissipated now? Well, I think this is a positive step forward, but unfortunately we see a lot of hysteria around this summit. I mean, U.S. and Russian leaders have met many times before, going back to the era of FDR, but for some reason, you know, there's so much hysteria about this summit, and it's going to put a lot of pressure on Trump that may make uh, his pledge of cooperation difficult. Earlier today, uh, Ron Paul said that the U.S. media tries to vilify Russia. Let's listen. We believe here in this country that uh, Trump has advice. It's not necessarily uh, the best. I think he has good instincts. I think he was very sincere today. I think it was all uh, very positive. But you also mentioned so far in this program about the American media, and that is a big problem because for some reason they're almost unanimously uh, endorsing the idea that we have to have an enemy. Uh, and at this point, especially for the last 20 years, they've been working very hard to make Russia uh, the enemy. And I think this is this is wrong, and uh, it's not the Democrats alone that do this. It's uh, the Democrats, and along with some disgruntled Republicans who just uh, they just don't like uh, Trump. But uh, no, I was very pleased with what went on today, and uh, it's a step in the right direction. They didn't rehash everything, whether it is, uh, I, I think the biggest thing that if it ever had a serious discussion, I guess it would come out on how much we've been involved when we shouldn't be involved, for instance, in Ukraine and how that occurred. But if they don't have, want to concentrate on those problems and they want to look forward, I think that is great. But I would like to, I think the next best state, step ever would be for us to reassess this and say that Trump's going in the right direction and talk him into getting rid of the sanctions on Russia. Uh, Jeremy, agree, disagree? I agree with Mr. Paul. Uh, and what disturbs me is you have this rhetoric of Trump as an appeaser. Uh, he's some kind of Manchurian candidate. You know, it almost invokes conspiracy theories in the 1950s from the right wing John Birch Society, but it's often coming now from liberal outlets. And this kind of rhetoric is very dangerous uh, and can undermine cooperation. Trump himself was uh, lowering expectations before he met Putin. What do you think the USA got out of this meeting? And what about President Putin uh, in Russia? Winners, losers, pluses, minuses? Well, I think uh, Putin came across quite well in the meeting. Uh, actually, one of the proposals I thought was ingenious, he uh, said he would assist in the Mueller investigation if the United States assisted uh, in investigations of Americans who committed tax evasion or other crimes <laughs> in Russia. Yeah. And frankly, I thought that was an ingenious uh, idea that could uh, really solve this problem. So I, I think Putin did come across quite well in the international media and defied some of the stereotypes uh, that have been presented about him. Apropos Syria, they seem to agree on the uh, Israel border, uh, and they seem to agree to disagree on Crimea. Where do these issues go from here? 
Well, one issue it was addressed, uh, Putin was urging Trump to push uh, the U.S. ally in Ukraine to adhere to the Minsk uh, peace agreements. And that seems to be a, a sensible uh, step that Trump could take. So that might alleviate the crisis in Ukraine to a certain extent. But yeah, I don't think uh, Trump, because of the pressures placed upon him, I don't think he would go so far uh, as to uh, side with Russia in the Crimean crisis or renounce you know, the lethal military aid that the US is providing the Ukrainian government. But that would be a step forward if he follows through on the pledge to uh, urge Ukraine to uh, you know, support the Minsk peace agreements. That would be a positive step forward for the time being. Thank you, author Jeremy Cos. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.